Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today we're going to talk about photomultiplier tubes. Okay, these are very cool devices. They're capable of detecting a single photon. You just have a single photon of light coming in the front of this detector here, and it knocks an electron off, and it's amplified through a series of what they call dynodes. It kind of rattles back and forth, and it uses secondary emission, where one electron can knock off more than one electron, maybe two or three, uh, electrons and then they'll be accelerated to the next dynode and the, each electron there will amplify that many times as well and by the time you get down to the bottom this is, this is a 10-stage photomultiplier uh, the current can be amplified like millions of times so you can detect single photons and it's very cool now let's take a look at this tube look at that very cool RCA tube you can't find these anymore that's for sure and so uh, you can use that in conjunction with something like this, which is a sodium iodine. We got that right? Sodium iodine crystal, which will produce when you have radiation, like some of the stuff I have produces radiation, will produce a little flash of light in that crystal. And then you can measure that light with this guy, PM tube. Okay, let's take a look at this. Very cool, huh? Okay, so here's an interesting picture that I found of a photomultiplier tube, and it kind of illustrates the concept where you have one photon coming in, and it'll hit the photocathode, and it'll knock an electron off. And so an electron will hit the first dynode because it's accelerated by a voltage. You have a voltage gradient with this uh, voltage divider here, so these are all the different voltages. So it keeps on accelerating it down the chain, and every time it hits a dynode, it will amplify the number of electrons that come off, like maybe two, maybe three, whatever. And so each of those will produce more current, more current as it rattles down the ch chain and amplifies, could amplify it millions of times until you get it to the output. Very cool. So let's take a look at this uh, photomultiplier tube in a little bit more detail. We'll unpack our tube and take a look at this. Very, very rare stuff here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, my buddy gave me this present. It's a going away present. He's going away and he couldn't take all this stuff. Oh my gosh. RCA. Radio Corporation of America. The original freaking box. Look at that. This is awesome. Let's pull this guy out. <clears throat> we'll take a look at this. Okay. Wrapped up in protective material. And, oh, this is the best part here. I'll show you this. Look at this. We'll take the tube out. Okay. It's got documentation with it. I had another tube. I was looking all over the internet and I couldn't find any of the pinouts or anything. Look at that. Is that freaking amazing or what? That is a work of art. Here's where the uh, light comes in. It has a photocathode there. And then it produces electrons. I need more light on the situation. See if this helps. Oh, look at that. RCA. Is that beautiful or what? Holy cow. That is a work of art. So the dynodes, I'm sure, are somewhere in here. There's a photocathode. So the light comes in there. So the light comes in the front window here. Oh, come on, don't roll off the table. And uh, knocks off an electron, so it can detect single photons. Then the uh, electron goes down through the dynodes. It's accelerated back and forth. It creates more secondary emission, which amplifies the current. Let's see if I can see the dynodes in there. may not be able to see them. They are inside this body region, and they're biased to different voltages, so it 
kind of rattles back and forth down through here and then produces an amplified current at the very bottom. So these are different levels of the dynode. And let's take a look here. Here's the pin outs. And it's got this original socket and everything with it. RCA electron tube. 7746. Okay. Let's take, we're going to put the tube away for a second. We'll look at the documents because this is something that you can't find anywhere, probably. Okay, so here is, oh my gosh, looks like the pages are getting ripped. Maybe, you know what I'll do? Let's try something. Okay, so here's our documents. I don't want to rip them. Seven seven four six multiplier photo tube. Okay. Very cool. I gotta straighten out these pages. We'll take a better look at this. Okay. Multiplier photo tube from RCA. Head-on type multiplier tube, okay, and looks like one of the pages ripped here. I'm trying to straighten this out, or maybe this is a separate piece of paper that comes with it. For your protection, there's a warranty against defects and workmanship. Okay, so that's a separate piece of paper. Let's just take a look at what else is in this document. Camera down to open this up. <clears throat> okay, anyway, here is the first page. Just kind of scan over it just in case. Okay. Take a look at all that on there. And here's the second page. Back when the stuff was made in America. Back before our traitorous leader shipped everything to some communist foreign country to manufacture for us. Look at that. Current amplification. All the characteristics. Here's some curves. This is uh, the uh, light spectrum that it's sensitive to. Measuring with a uh, supply voltage. Okay, so this is going to tell you everything that you need to hopefully get this tube working. Okay, looks like it's ripped a little bit. Okay, very cool. I'm going to have to put the camera down to turn the page, I think, because these pages are kind of ripped and stuck together. Okay, what is this? Directly to dynode. Okay, so here's a general schematic of how the thing works. Where the light comes in through here. And then, um, it'll knock off an electron on the photocathode. This must be the photocathode. And then it will amplify, or maybe this is the photocathode. Semi-transparent photocathode. Oh, so the photocathode's up here, so it knocks an electron off of here when a photon comes in. Then it hits the first dynode, and the current's amplified. Second dynode, third, fourth, on down the chain. Very cool, huh? So there's a theory of how this guy works. Okay. And what is this? Anode microamps versus volts between anode and dynodes. Okay. So it tells you how much current you're going to draw versus voltage. Very small dark current is observed. Here's another graph. Oh, this is back when they used to do graphs by hand. Oh, this is so exciting, isn't it? Relative anode current percent. Focus electric voltage percent. Okay, so it's how much your focus. There must be a focus electrode. Okay, so yeah, so the focus electrode here 
uh, focuses the beam, but when you focus it more, it decreases the beam current, as in most electron tubes, if you work on electron tubes, which I do. Okay. Oh, this is so cool, huh? And we'll take a look here at this curve, which is dynode volts to anode. Okay. So that'll tell us what voltage that we should use, probably. Dynode reference to anode. So it looks like they're operating at around, I don't know, maybe peak is around minus 600 volts. I'm going to have to see what usually we have a voltage divider on here. So if I can flip the page here. Okay. The use an average anode current. Okay, so let's talk about the percent amplification between each of the dynodes. Luminous sensitivity per amps. Amp, what is that? Luminous sensitivity amps per lumen. Okay. And so this must be in amps because they're saying amperes. An equivalent anode dark current input. Okay, so I guess it's a dark current plot. And the plot right beside of it is uh, what supply volts between anode and cathode. Okay. So supply volts between anode and cathode and the sensitivity per looms. Uh, it depends on the color and temperature. Okay, so there's that plot. And oh this is amazing. You're not gonna find this information any place on the web now. Like I said they've censored everything as part of their uh, worldwide takeover of the NWO, if you know what I mean, communism for everybody. Oh, look at this. Here's a circuit diagram, and these are the voltage divider for the different dynodes. The photocathode, and they're going to tell the pinouts over here, so we'll be able to relate which pins go to which dynode. Very cool. So this will give us all the information we need to build the circuit for dividing. And uh, I'll tell you what resistors to use and everything. Look at this. Okay. Information furnished by RCA. God bless RCA. Okay, here we go. And here's the back page. And this looks like a mechanical drawing, the size of the tube. Here is the pinouts and what they're connected to. Uh, it tells the pins and the dynode that they're connected to and are the elements of the tube, the focus electrode, photocathode, etc. Okay, there we go. Very cool. So there is our document, which I'm sure you will not be able to find on the internet because I've been doing searches for this type of stuff and I have not been successful at finding a 10 stage anode type detector. Very cool. We're going to be using this for some interesting projects, I can tell you. Anyway, we're going to do some real cool projects soon. Um, this is a Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.